Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is July 7th and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see this trough across the Gulf of Alaska. It's eventually going to be moving across western Canada and down into the Pacific Northwest. It's already here across western Canada. You already know that if you're out and about there. Getting some precipitation. It's going to be slowly sliding off to the south here. Over the next few days, it's going to bring a weak frontal system down in towards Washington State. It's going to be losing some of its punch. But we'll take a look at what that has in store for us. And we'll take a look at the extent of forecast. As always, you know, we're moving in through the month of July here. We want to see if there's any big ridges building up here off our coastal areas here and if that's going to be setting up shop across the region because at this time of year, you can really ramp up the temperatures here across the Pacific Northwest. So taking a look at the visible satellite images, let's scroll through yesterday and kind of see a very nice day out there. You know, a lot of sunshine for much of the region. You can see some of that marine there moving down the Washington, Oregon coast. And we emerged back out this morning. You can see the marine there actually actually is fairly well entrenched right along the immediate coastline. It's pushed into the Chehala Scout. That's a, a lower level area between the Olympic Mountains and some of the higher terrain to the southwest or across portions of southwest Washington. So the Chehala Scout looks like that peaked in there a little bit here this morning. You see Seattle, Portland, a lot of the Willamette Valley generally clear. So if we take a look here, this is the in ver vertically integrated smoke. This is high resolution rapid refresh, the 12Z. Let's put this into motion and we're looking at the Pomas fire there and you can see a little bit of that smoke flying up there and it looks like actually a little bit of a hot spot there near the Olympic Mountains of Kitsap Peninsula there also. So you can see some of the smoke drifting north from uh, California as well. So it's that time of the year where these fires start to get going a little bit here and we'll be watching that on a daily basis. Looking at the European model, so uh, as you remember, we saw we looked at the infrared satellite imagery, and we had that trough out there, and that is the reflection of it here at 500 millibars, about 18,000 feet up in the atmosphere. A little bit of a ridge here, though. We're going to be pretty warm here for a couple days, and then we'll take a look at what's coming midweek, and then what's coming after that also. But I'm going to put this into motion, and you can kind of see that system moving through southeast Alaska. That's going to bring that frontal system and some decent precipitation amounts. Vancouver Island northbound, especially, it's going to try to. Drive some of that precipitation down a little bit further south towards the Pacific Northwest and on into Washington State. I'll take a look at that here in a moment. You can kind of see the troughing drag behind and kind of keep us there in this onshore flow a little bit, generally speaking. But you can see the ridge really amplifying here as we go after that system. In the wake of that system, we try to build this ridge in here a bit. You can kind of see still that zonal flow across some portions of Western Canada. Now, this is going to allow us to stay somewhat modified here. We're not going to really get the heat temperatures ramped up too much, but we really got to watch this next ridge as we go through the following weekend to see just how much that is going to amplify and how close that will get towards the Pacific Northwest. So, I had some comments about this. I usually get some uh, pretty, uh, you know, some pretty positive feedback here when I show the northern hemisphere uh, tropospheric polar vortex. Again, about 18,000 feet. There's the North Pole there. There's Washington State. Hawaiian Islands would be right there. There's Japan, and you can see Africa over there, and you can see Greenland, for example, and then you see the east coast of uh, North America as well down towards Florida. So if I put that into motion, you can kind of see the system swinging through the Gulf of Alaska right there, and then the wake of that, we start to build a little bit of that ridge here. You see, you know, it's kind of a subtle ridge here as we go through the end of the week. But again, we'll be watching it on a daily basis. And then maybe the ridging developing a little bit more after that. We'll see how that goes. But if I put that into motion, you can kind of see that moving across the northern hemisphere there. And of course, where we get this clash of air masses is known as the mid-latitudes. These are what is known as Rossby waves. And we call them ridges and troughs. And they bring us heat domes. And they bring us upper level lows and some chillier temperatures here and some big heat waves here also. So yeah, fun stuff looking at that. This is the GFS version of it as well, and this goes out about 15 days or so, 16 days to be exact, 384 hours. So taking a look here at the European. So this next system, it is bringing precipitation as we go through the day today. Again, Haida Gwaii, Southeast Alaska, Vancouver Island, northbound as we go through this evening. And you can see some pretty good amounts moving into Vancouver Island as we go through the day tomorrow. But you see Seattle, Portland, largely rain-free as we go through Tuesday night. But that starts to change a little bit here as we go through the Today, Wednesday. It's that weak frontal system sagging down south across the area there and brings some precipitation though, mainly north to Seattle, some of the North Cascades, southwest BC. Looks like maybe a rainy day there developing or unfolding in the forecast here on today, Wednesday. 
And you can see that onshore flow hanging on for a bit, some residual showers, pushing on through Thursday afternoon. And then we start to build a little bit of a ridge here, like I mentioned, as we go through the following weekend. And we'll take a look here in the uh, upcoming days to see just how much you know this ridge is going to be affecting. You can see the high pressure off the coastline here as we look at the mean sea level pressure there. But still, some general onshore flow ongoing here. Try to, it's going to try to keep us modified a little bit, but we've got to watch it closely. So total precipitation in inches. Get a scroll through the six-day uh, period here, and you can clearly see the big difference between Western British Columbia versus Seattle and Portland, for example. Better amounts across some of the central and north Cascades of Washington, but you get across the higher train of British Columbia. You're getting some pretty decent amounts here, especially for you know the early portion of July. Not bad at all. I know some areas will gladly take that. It can help out with some of the fire season later on and whatnot keep things a little bit more moist uh, but you can see eastern washington oregon not picking up too much precipitation out of this as we go all the way on in towards what is that saturday night that would be july 12th saturday night so if we take a look at the two meter temperature anomaly you know we're above average here we're going to look at the temperatures here in a moment but you can see as we go through the midweek period we cool things down a bit and kind of see the chillier temperatures working their way in here but then towards the end of the period we start to warm things up yet again now 925 millibars, about 2,500 feet up in the atmosphere. You can say we still have some of this onshore flow ongoing. So it doesn't allow us to warm up too much. We're still reaching some of the mid 80s here for places like Seattle and whatnot. And then as we go through uh, this next period, uh, frontal system there. You can kind of see it off the coastline there. You see some of the gusty west and northwest winds across portions of eastern Oregon, eastern Washington as we go through Tuesday night and again into Wednesday there, the onshore flow with us. But then as we get the next ridge setting up, you see things start to slightly turn off shore here as we go through the day on Friday. Now we're on the day Saturday and you can kind of see how we got these westerlies east of the Cascades and some of these northerlies down the Willamette Valley and some of these northwest winds here. So we're not in a true strong off shore uh, pattern here coming up through this weekend which is going to allow us to warm up too much so anyway if we continue off into the future you can see as we go through saturday I man look at this you still got some of these stronger winds ripping across the region there as well it can kick up some of the fire danger out there also but now looking at national blend of models this is monday july 7th this is for today look at seattle mid 80s look at Olympia 87, some 90s in the Willamette Valley there. Look at 103 down across some of Southwest Oregon, Eastern Oregon warming up a bit here as well. We go on in through Tuesday, July 8th tomorrow. Look at Seattle, nice and warm. A bit chillier though. You're getting some clouds here spreading across British Columbia, keeping those temperatures suppressed a little bit. But look at Eastern Washington, the Tri Cities 104 in Bend, Oregon in the mid 90s there as well. And we go through Wednesday and you see those clouds start to sag a bit further south and we start to cool things down west to the the Cascades. Also, Seattle dropping all the way back down towards 70 degrees. We go through Thursday. Temperatures suppressed again here across much of the region, but then we start to bounce those temperatures back again here as we go through the upcoming weekend and warming things up yet again. But we'll see just how much we're going to do so over the next few days. Now, the Climate Prediction Center continues to show in the 6 to 10 day and 8 to 14 days some areas of above average precipitation. If we look at yesterday afternoon's European Ensemble run, you can see much of the region here below normal, but you see the sharp cutoff right around the northern tip of Vancouver Island up towards southeast Alaska, western British Columbia. If we look at the GFS as well, you can kind of see a similar cutoff there in some of the heavier precipitation amounts over the next 16 days, but definitely below normal for southwest BC, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Western Montana, and way off towards the Rocky Mountains. If we look at the Canadian, also a pretty similar signal there also here. So remember that when I show you the Climate Prediction Center stuff here in a moment. And if we look at percent of average precipitation over the last three months since April 7th, you can see Pacific Northwest Every single square inch of the region has been below normal, some areas substantially so, especially the east slopes of the Washington Cascades between 5 and 25% of normal and a widespread area here across the region between 25 and 50%. So not a great look heading on into fire season. Also average temperatures uh, over here, average high temperatures anyway, over the last 90 days have been above average across the area. Minimum temperatures, a little bit different story there. Some areas are right around normal or just slightly below, but the vast majority, or I shouldn't say vast majority, I'll just say majority has been above average here across the area. Now, looking at the Climate Prediction Center, so the west coast there, the above normal signal exists July 12th through 16th, and they continue to show this broad brush here that is, a is some pretty good disagreement with what the GFS, the European, or the Canadian was showing. So if anybody at the National Weather Service is watching this and you got some hookups there at the Climate Prediction Center, 
you might want to tell them to stop broad brushing here just because there's a trough across the Gulf of Alaska does not mean above the normal precipitation for the Pacific Northwest clearly as what we have seen in the model runs here and this has played out a few times here over the last few months as well and the 8 to 14 day also you can see that mixed bag there across portions of Northwest Washington but look at that strong above normal signal there as we go through July 15th through the 20th and the 8 to 14 day something similar there as well we did not see any hint of this in the weather models there with that above normal precipitation precipitation across some of the region so maybe they'll fix that also a little bit of a monsoon season signal starting to show up here as we go through mid-july but anyway i'm heading out to hawaii today the volcano is scheduled to erupt here over the next few days so i'm going to go out there see if i can't catch that and um what else we do some other things out there visit some family and i'm going to take my show on the road so hopefully i'll be doing my updates here on a daily basis no matter where i am but otherwise click like and subscribe we will do this all again tomorrow and i will talk to you guys then